In this tutorial, we are going to create this highly detailed fire explosion all inside of Blender. This is a perfect video to get started with smoke and fire simulations in Blender, so even if you've never tried it before, stick around because I'm going to show you some things that I wish I knew when I started. We are going to create an animated smoke emitter, simulate our smoke and make sense of these settings, and then create a super simple shader setup to make the details stand out for an awesome render. Alright, so we want to start off just opening up an empty Blender blender scene like this then we can add in a cube Then we want to go ahead and give this cube a couple of subdivisions so I'm adding in a subdivision modifier right here and giving that a value of 5 then we want to go ahead and hover our mouse over this one and hit ctrl a to apply it to the mesh this sphere is going to be our emitter and we want to animate it kind of growing bigger like this to simulate that the explosion is kind of expanding and we could do that using keyframes but one method that I found works even better, and you'll see why pretty soon, is using shape keys instead. So let's just add in a human armature to reference the scale of the explosion. Select basic human right here. If you don't find this option, you want to make sure that you have the Rigify add-on enabled. So just go to add-ons right here and search for rig and you'll see it right here. So make sure that's enabled. Alright, so let's add in two shape keys. So this first one is going to be our base shape key. So let's just go to edit mode and scale this down a little bit. Then we want to select the second shape key and increase the value here to 1. So now that shape key is enabled. Then we can go back to edit mode and just scale it up, bring it up a little bit and then select this vertice right at the bottom. Now you can see I have that selected. Then I want to hit O to enable proportional editing. You can see it's enabled right here. Then just hit G to grab it like so. Scale that up in the middle and then we can grab it down again. To create this kind of mushroom shape and now we can actually delete this guy right here and when we animate this value right here you can see it goes from a small sphere to a big mushroom so let's actually give that some keyframes so bring the value to zero right click it and select insert keyframe and you'll see what we get a keyframe at frame 1. Then we can skip to uh, frame 25 or something and increase this value to 1. Right click, give it a second keyframe. So now that we play you can see it expands like this. Alright so to make it a bit more random and kind of chaotic we can add in some noise to this one. So first of all I think we're gonna need some more subdivisions right here. So I'm just adding in a second subdivision modifier and I'm actually setting that to simple here and also increasing the levels to 2. Then we can add in a displace modifier, hit new and then hit this button right here. So that's going to take you to the texture that we just created. So you can see now we're in the texture properties tab and we want to change this texture to be a cloud texture. And we can change how this looks by playing around with the size right here as well as changing the strength in the modifier tab. And now you'll see why I prefer using shape keys for this. Because when we play it back, you'll see that the texture kind of sticks in this way. And it kind of gives it a little bit of animation. So it's going to look like fire that kind of expands outwards and rotates inwards like this. This is optional, but I'm actually going to add in a second displace modifier. But uh, this time I'm going to bring the size down quite a bit and also decrease the strength. So now we have some secondary detail over our uh, larger displacement. And you can change the speed of this animation by left clicking this keyframe right here and dragging it along. Perhaps I'm going to go with 30. Alright, so now that our emitter is done, we're gonna start simulating the actual smoke. And really the easiest way to do that is just to select this object and go to Object, Quick Effects, and then select Quick Smoke. And what that does is, first of all, you'll see that this kind of goes into wireframe mode. And under the physics properties, you'll see that it already has this fluid modifier. And we also got this big box right here. It's gonna be our domain and that one also has a fluid but this time it's set to domain instead so all our smoke is gonna be contained within this domain so we just want to make sure that it's big enough and we can place it so that it's right at the bottom of the scene right here and if you jump to frame one and start playing you'll see that we actually have some smoke going on and uh, there's some things we want to change here to make it look good first of all we want to keyframe the smoke emission from this emitter object so it stops emitting smoke at frame 30 so just go to frame 30 
select this object and you'll see under the flow source we have this option for the surface emission before frame 30 we want it to be 0.5 and we can give that a keyframe then if we skip to frame 31 we want to keyframe it to zero so when it's at zero it's not going to emit any smoke at all and if it's at a very high number say 10 or something the smoke is going to emit very far from the actual emitter object so that's not going to look very good either that's why i kept it at 0.5 during the explosion and you'll also notice that we don't have any fire, we just have smoke. So to give it some fire as well, we can change the flow type from smoke to fire plus smoke. Then in the smoke domain, we also want to increase the resolution a little bit so we can see things a little bit more clearly. So if this value is very low, like 8, you'll see that we have barely any detail at all. But if we bring it way too high, it's going to take way too long to simulate. So when I'm working on the simulation, I usually keep it at 64 and then I'm going to increase that later. And if we play it, we see that we have some kind of explosion going on. And we can actually hide this emitter object for now. So a couple of things that I like to do to make it look a bit more realistic is, first of all, under the emitter object, if we enable initial velocity, that's going to make it so that it kind of keeps on going upwards a little bit even after the expansion has stopped. To refresh it, we can just click this value right here and just hit enter. So it kind of keeps a little bit of the speed from the emitter object. Awesome. And another thing, under the smoke domain, I like to enable border collisions at the bottom right here. So what that does, it basically makes the smoke collide with the bottom right here. Now let's work a little bit on the fire. Select the domain object and find this drop down called fire. And under here we have lots of useful settings. First of all, we can change the reaction speed. So if we bring this to something lower like 0.2, that's gonna make it so the fire doesn't dissolve as quickly. And I think that looks really good because we have these parts of the fire that keep going upwards with the smoke. And another thing I like to change is to bring these to temperature, to slide them to max, so it's gonna be five and 2.5. And that basically just makes it so that the fire has a little bit more upwards momentum. We can also enable dissolve right here and set it to something like 20. So that's going to make it so that the smoke dissolves after some time. And I think it's already looking pretty good. So I'm going to try to increase the resolution and see what that looks like. So you'll notice right away it's quite a bit slower to simulate. But we have some more detail going on in the smoke and fire. So yeah, you can kind of pause it a couple of frames in and see if you like how it looks so far. And I think that looks amazing. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and bake this simulation before we add some more smaller details. So you wanna go into the smoke domain and go under the cache settings. I'm gonna set the frame end to 100 and I'm also gonna set the cache end to 100. So it's just gonna simulate 100 frames. We wanna change the type from replay to modular and you'll see that gives us this option right here to bake data. To be able to bake some smaller details after that, we need to have this is resumable option enabled as well before we bake. So just select that and then we can just hit bake data. All right, so now that that's done baking, we can play it back and see what we got. I think that's looking really good, but I think it's lacking a little bit of detail here. The easiest way to do that is just by enabling noise right here. And since we use this is resumable option, we have the option to actually bake some noise into the explosion. And an upress factor of two will work pretty good, but I wanna go crazy on this one and set it to four, leave all these settings as they are and just hit bake noise. All right, so once the noise was done baking, you can see that we have this pretty awesome looking explosion going on. But uh, one thing you'll notice is that the playback speed is so slow. This is gonna be a pain to work with and it's just gonna slow us down a lot. But luckily, there's a very simple way we can fix this playback speed issue. Hit Shift A and select import open vdb that will take us to the folder where we saved our file and you'll see that we have this cache fluid folder right here and if you double click that you'll have a couple of options under the noise folder you'll see that we have all of these vdb frames if we just select one of them then hit a all of them will get selected and then all we have to do is hit import open vdb volume that will import the explosion that we just made and you can see it matches up perfectly and now we can actually delete everything except for this volume and right away i noticed that the scene just speeds up a lot and also the playback speed is much quicker but we still have all the detail and all the volume info we need for our shading 
All right, so let's move on to shading the explosion. So if you go to the shading tab, you'll notice that we don't see anything. And that's simply because our smoke object doesn't have any material yet. So we just select that and hit new. That's going to give us this volume material. We still don't see anything. That is because we have to change this density attribute from density to density noise. How did I know this? Well, if you go to the object data properties for the smoke object, you can see that we have all of these different values that we can work with. So for example, we have the density value, the flame value, and yeah, those are pretty much the only ones we're gonna use. And you can do all of this shading in Eevee, but in my opinion, it never looks as good as when you're using cycles. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to that and also make sure that I'm using my GPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in an attribute node and type in flame noise. Then I'm gonna plug that into the black body intensity, adding in a math node, plugging it in between here. We can set it to multiply and set this value here to something like 1000. And I mean, this looks okay, but I want to find a way to actually bring out the details of the flames a little bit more. One way we can do that is by adding in a color ramp between the attribute and multiply node. And now we can control the fire effect by using these sliders right here. And of course you can always go back and change this later, but I find that a setup like this usually looks pretty good. So to give us a bit more control, we can actually duplicate this setup right here and just move it up like this. And then we can plug the value into the density. But then of course we're gonna have to change the attribute from flame noise to density noise. That's gonna start to give us a little bit of smoke like this. And actually I think this is looking pretty good already, but I noticed that we're gonna have to increase this multiply value for the fire a bit to have it show through the thick smoke. And now I just wanna change these values a little bit. And I'm also gonna decrease this multiply value to have the smoke be a little bit less dense. And if you jump to a frame with only smoke, you'll see that it's very black and it doesn't really have any light direction. So I'm just gonna do a simple light setup with just a normal sun lamp. I'm gonna rotate that a little bit. And I also wanna add a backlight. So I'm adding in a point light and bringing it behind the smoke and then increasing the value of that. Then all we need to do is hit render and see what we got. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. Feel free to leave a comment suggesting a future tutorial or changes to this format that I'm using in these videos. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can easily put this explosion that we made into your live footage to create a custom VFX shot. If that's something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on it. From now on, I'll be uploading a brand new Blender tutorial every Friday Friday, as well as creating some of these process videos like the Viking one if you saw that one. So yeah, thank you guys for your support so far and see you in the next one.